Okay, so our topic right now is evaporation. We want to talk about what is it? What exactly is evaporation? You guys know about this already, obviously. Um, but we're going to talk about it in terms of atoms and molecules and a little bit about how it's different from, for example, boiling. All right, let's just start with that. How is evaporation different from boiling? Well, when you boil a liquid, you heat it up to its boiling point, which we'll talk about in a future video, and then it turns from a liquid into a gas. Cool. Well, evaporation is a bit different. We're still talking about changing from a liquid into a gas, but in order for it to be evaporation, the change must happen below the boiling point. All right, so you have to be less than the temperature at which the liquid boils. So if it's changing into a, into a gas at its boiling point, then it's boiling. But if it's changing into a gas somewhere below its boiling point, that's called evaporation. Okay, that's the main idea. Um, well, we might revisit that topic again when we talk about boiling, but just to get you started on that, on thinking that way. So in evaporation, what happens to atoms and molecules? And what happens to temperature? That's our topic for this video. So basically, we have a little image here of atoms changing from a liquid to a gas. And you might imagine this is the surface of the liquid here. Down under here, the atoms or molecules are in their liquid state. And then above here, they're in their gaseous state. So you can see they're more spread out in the gas. They're closer together in the liquid. And you can see that some of the some of the gas molecules are going back into the liquid and some of the liquid molecules are turning into a gas. That's basically these guys, this one, this one, this one, this one. These are the guys that are evaporating. Okay? Cool. So first thing that happens, or the first thing you need to know about evaporation, is that the atoms or molecules escape only from the surface of the liquid. They do not escape from inside the liquid. So the only atoms or molecules that are able to escape are the ones that are at the liquid surface. Okay, so that would be these guys here basically. These guys can escape. These guys down here cannot escape. Nope, they're blocked by the atoms or molecules above them. They try it, maybe they try to escape, but they can't because they hit the guys up here. So they have to be at the surface in order to be free to escape and become a gas. Okay? Alright, so next question then, if the molecules escape from the surface, what kinds of molecules escape? Well, I've got just a little funny illustration, maybe not funny because it involves animals hunting and killing each other, but anyway, I mean that's just nature, that's the way God made the world, or at least that's the way the world is right now anyway. Whether that's the way God intended it or not, we don't know. But that's the way the world is. Um, so this is a wolf. And those are sheep. Anybody who has ever tended flocks or herds knows that wolves will come and try to eat the sheep. So the question, which sheep escape? And that should be pretty clear. Whoever's the fastest, right? This guy up here, he's pretty fast. Whoever's the fastest sheep, that's the one that's going to escape, for sure. So which kinds of sheep escape? The fast ones. Which kind of molecules escape? Well, it's the same answer. The fast ones! The ones with the most kinetic energy, the ones that are vibrating the most vigorously, the ones that are moving the fastest. All right, so the fast molecules, the ones with the most kinetic energy, those are the ones that escape from the surface, remember, from the surface of the liquid. So you could have a molecule somewhere down and inside the liquid that's got a lot of energy and it's moving really fast, but it's not gonna escape because there are other molecules in the way. So only ones at the surface, but it's the fastest ones at the surface that escape, all right? That kind of makes sense. I mean, the ones that vibrate the most are the ones that are able, able to overcome the attractive forces with their neighbors and they can pop, pop out of the surface. Okay, so if the fast ones escape, then what's that mean for the rest of the molecules that are sitting there in their liquid state? Well, let's take this guy here as an example. 
This guy's competing in the World Series of Poker, which basically, you know, obviously we have a rule against gambling here at Faith Academy, so do not take this as me endorsing gambling. Um, but it serves to show, to illustrate my point here. Um, this guy did not start with this many chips when he sat down at this game, right? He did not start with this many chips. These used to belong to other people, and he's won a bunch of hands, and probably he had sponsors who gave him money so that he could compete in this tournament. Who knows how much of it is his own money? Possibly not much. Um, in any case, um, he's got all these chips, and if he's the winner at the end, he wins a prize money for the tournament, whatever, anyway. So... These used to belong to other players. Some of these were his, but some, most of them probably, or at least a good chunk of them, belong to other people. So how has he gotten them? By winning hands, right? Now, let's say that he was gonna, like this is a regular game of poker, and he decides to cash in. So he's done playing, he takes those chips with him, and he goes to the cash register and, and gets the money that those chips are worth. Dude! What happened to the table then? I mean, he was sitting at a table, there were a bunch of people playing, he's now taken away his chips, and he had he had the most chips. So now what happens to the table? What happens to the total number of chips on the table? Well, there's way less chips than there used to be. All right? Same thing when, um, when the energetic particles in the liquid evaporate, this is what happens, right? The, ener the energy is leaving. A lot of the energy is leaving with those most energetic particles. So if the energy is leaving, that means there's less in the liquid, less energy left in the liquid. So if there's less energy, that means there's less motion, there's less temperature. So the liquid cools off. Temp decreases. All right? So the temperature of the liquid drops because it's lost energy. So basically to sum that up, the high energy molecules leave the liquid, so the average energy in the liquid drops, and that means that the temperature then drops also. All right? Okay. So we now know what's going on with the atoms and what happens to the liquid. It cools off when evaporation occurs. That's something you need to know, that the liquid cools off because of evaporation. Now we want to know, how can we make the liquid evaporate faster? So how can we evaporate things faster? Well, we'll have to change some conditions, and I've just got them written here just straight away so you can see. There's three main ways that you can change the speed of evaporation. All right, and they are these right here. So first, you could change the temperature of the liquid. All right, so you could change the temperature. If you increase the temperature, that is going to make the evaporation happen faster. If you blow a breeze, a wind, in Britain, sometimes they call that a draught across the surface. So you've got a fan, and you blow it across the water or the surface of the liquid there, that will make the evaporation happen faster. And then if you increase the surface area of the liquid, that will make the evaporation happen faster. Now it's worth noting, when you increase the temperature, if you want to just increase the evaporation of the liquid, then you can increase the temperature up to a certain point. But at some point you reach the boiling point of the liquid and then it starts boiling and it's not evaporating anymore. It's boiling, okay? Here's just a couple of images to help with the third one there, the amount of surface area. So here we have a glass of water, here we have a bowl of water. Which one do you think would evaporate faster? And the answer is... Ding, ding, ding! The bowl of water. Why would it evaporate faster? Because it's got a bigger surface area, okay? Bigger surface area than the glass. So the glass would be slower to evaporate than this bowl. All right, because the surface area, the surface area of the liquid right there, that that is smaller than, this isn't a cross section of this bowl, but that's smaller than the surface area of the bowl here. All right, so that's a, definitely a smaller surface area than this. So this, slower, this, faster. Okay.
All right, that's all I have for you for now. Thanks for watching.